What's up guys? We just got our three cylinder G16 engine from Toyota. This is the same engine from the GR Corollas and the GR Yaris's. It's like Toyota over engineered this thing for big power. So companies like Power Tune Australia made over 800 on factory internals, which is crazy. So factory rods and pistons. Now we are gonna build it with Nitto Performance Engineering, rods and pistons, Supertech valve train, Kelfry camshafts. Where our power goals are between six to 700. We're gonna get this down to Randall at Precision Balancing and have him start tearing into it. What's up guys, we have Nitto Performance Engineering on board the Celica project and they're supplying us our pistons and rods for the G16 engine. The pistons are nine and a half to one compression and the rods are an I-beam design at a 4340 round billet stock and they make massive horsepower on all the engine components that they supply to the engines around the world. So I'm excited to have them on board and uh, we'll be making some big power pretty soon. Hi, my name is Randall. This is my shop, Precision Balancing and Machine. And today we're here working on Ryan Turk's Toyota G16E engine for his up and coming project. The shop's been here since uh, the late 70s. My dad started the business. He was an automotive machinist his entire life. I started doing this as a young kid. I was always down here in the summers and he would just put me to work. After a while, this is something I definitely wanted to do. We're a full service shop. We have all the equipment here in house and we've been kind of upgrading that equipment over the years. Plus a lot of these newer platforms that we work on require stricter tolerances. They require different crosshatch angles on the cylinders. You really have to be on top of the machining processes and how things get done in order to make that appropriate for each build. All right, a little backstory. It's my dad here. His name's Ted Wingate. He was on the cover of Hot Rod in 1964 with his two 32 Ford Roadsters that he had out in California at the time. He knew someone that worked in the magazine, got his cars featured on the cover, and that black 32 Roadster was the first car he ever built in the 50s, which was in a chicken coop in Massachusetts. And then he towed it out to California. And that car later on, after it was sold, became the Hot Wheels 32 Roadster with the flames on it that we all know today. All right, there's gonna be three of us working on Ryan's engine today. Other than myself, we got Max here. How's it going? I'm Max. I've been working for Randall for a few years. I've been working on a lot of different things, imports to high-end restorations. I enjoy all the interesting things we do and you get to learn a lot over the years. So next up, we got Thomas here. I've been working here for a little over five years. It's been great doing all the different motors, seeing what we can do better, and meeting all the different race car drivers and builders. This is Gabby, our shop cat. She's been here Longer than both of us combined. 11 years. <laughs> she was a stray across town. We took her in. Now she runs the show. Those are the cam angle sensors, I'm assuming. Yeah. The electors are in the back. Yeah. Those so both, the cam cap. Yeah, so both those bolts are dual purpose. Not only do they hold the sensors in, but they're holding the valve cover down onto the head. Okay. Come on. Give it a flip. Thank you. 
So roller follower off the cam lobe. Yeah, hydraulic. Yeah, it's really lifter fortunate. on one side, Esque. the valve on the other side. It's pretty common setup nowadays in all yeah. the modern engines. They have the finger follower and the hydraulic lifter. This register here is driven off the back of the camshaft and the O-ring just makes a little seal right in the center of the oh, cam like there. Oil supply through the cam, the actual cam cord to that bearing or whatever's in there, just so that it has oil but doesn't spray everywhere. Nice working on things that are new, that aren't rusted. Together. Nice clean engine. Like that just spun right off. No rust, no corrosion. Oh, oh, my. Oh. Oh. Good? Yeah. sealer they use is very firm, doesn't run off and drip into the engine. You have to come in there and just carefully scrape all that silicone off. It's a pretty tedious task, but it does its job. These parts don't leak, like they don't leak oil. They do that because if they didn't have a sealer that had that integrity to it, it would push in and curl over and could potentially end up in the cylinder head or even down in the engine, which would make its way down to the oil pickup and you don't want that. So we always look to see if the cam caps are numbered or not. Some platforms they aren't, but on this Toyota platform they are. Intake two, intake three, intake four, exhaust two, three, four. So we always note the orientation of that. That way when it goes back together, you know, we know where everything is. And the front cap is all one piece, so that's obvious. This motor has a really cool feature is the cam caps, or the where the cams ride in on the bottom is actually not integral to the head. Basically, we call it a cam carrier. I'm assuming you take it out and get new ones. Say if you run dirty oil through your cams and destroy your lobes or journals. A lot of the times with other heads, you, if you lose the caps or score up your caps, you, the head's junk because they have to be, they're matched to the head and machined at the factory. Most of the time with cam carriers, like some other brands, you have a cam carrier that's replaceable. If you mess it up, the head's not junk, which is really good for heads that are very expensive. Yeah. This made a big part. Two green bolts, and they came off two. Caps. Yeah. All right, this is the bottom side of our roller followers. The valve tip sits on this side with a lash cap in between. This side sits on the lifter here, and that's where it pivots from with the cam lobe in the center.
hundred percent by the book. No comment trolls. Just ease it on down, Max. Oh, yeah. Perfect. This engine has three oil squirters per cylinder. In most cases, they only have one oil squirter per cylinder in engines that would come with them from the factory. All right, we got Ryan's engine all apart. We're doing the inspection process next. Everything looks good. We're gonna go over everything, take measurements, and start our process. Once we get the block apart, gotta get the head apart so we can build a new part on it. What's up, boys? You're here. I made it. All right. Don't worry, I got the parts. You got the parts. You guys tore Check it down a lot faster than expected, so. Well, there's three of us on it. Yeah, yeah, well, that makes sense. So a lot of hands, <laughs> a lot of space, a lot of prep. Yeah. I thought, I thought Zach was gonna have you do things three or four different times, so I figured it was gonna take all day. We thought he was gonna help, but he just stood, <laughs> he just stood around stood and around with his lens on yeah. you guys. Look at how tiny this thing yeah. is, dude. This is gonna make like 700 horse, that's crazy. Yeah, the cylinder head looks amazing. They did a really great job with that. Quite the um, operation, dude. It started out manufacturing. You know, I started the cylinder support forever ago. Okay. You know, back in the trick days was when I started to put that all together. Put it all together because block guards don't do anything. All Come. it was was a ring that you pounded in an OEM block. Yeah, okay. And then the sleeves, we'd have a you know a six thousand dollar bill, get it on the dyno, boom, blow a head gasket. Right. And that's why I, I had to come up with something that yeah. worked that left the OEM cylinder. Short block oh, wait, assemblies are you, is our specialty. You're doing build short blocks? Oh yeah, all the time. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's our specialty. Cam pumps out probably one a day. 
Nice. We do probably two to two twenty yeah. short blocks a year. Real popular now. VQ, VQ stuff. Yeah. Huge. Obviously Honda stuff because that's my world. But the N series BMW. Okay. All these have come off the machine and are done with the CSS. That's installed, ready for finished machine. Cool. So this is the motor in there. We're mocked up, baby. Or fixtured up, I should say. <laughs> so basically, once we once we get it in the machine, touch off the tool, probe wherever the wherever you, it's programmed from, yep. but center hole. Do a test pass around the very top in case it does something wacky. You we do, can always deck it off. Do you just do like a couple thou cut? Couple thou, just, yeah, a, okay. just a just a couple thou to trace out around the cylinder. Yeah. And you just so you can see it, just yeah. so you can see what what it's gonna do. Run the test pass, and you'll never fail. Because worst case, it takes off, goes through this bolt. And snaps yeah. off an end mill. <laughs> I know. It doesn't mess up the yeah. block. <laughs> yeah. So, what are you looking for? You're just looking for it to trace that outer portion of the cooling jacket. You know, it tends to be very time consuming. Yeah. But once I dial this in, if I had 10 of them, yeah. 20 minutes a piece. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, in and out, in and out, yeah. in and out. It's that first one, getting it to the right dimension, making sure when you make the rings that they're all exactly the same. If yeah. they're not, you label them so you know exactly where it's at so you can quickly make an adjustment. They'll come out quick. There she is. Look at that little guy. Make sure it's seated on the step, that way when you deck it, it's all one surface. Yeah. Leave the coolant jackets there, so that hole comes down through here. It still flows water between them. It's nice having guys like this local, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so this is the upper pan to the engine, and there's like a big oil pedestal that has uh, coolant that goes through it to act as an oil cooler as well, which is uh, you find in a lot of new cars. So we're not gonna run those. I want to do ORB, but it's not gonna be enough space in between. So we're gonna do weld bunks, which uh, also need to get cut down because it's just there's not enough space to weld in the center there. But we'll cut them down so that there's enough space in between and Victor can get to both of them. That's it. Bye bye. I get to do some lathe work, baby.
Nice. Perfecto! Hey, what's up guys? It's Randall. We're back at Precision Balancing. We got Ryan's GT411 project going on. We got the block back from CSS, so that's ready to go for us. Victor took care of the bed plate. He had to weld a couple of fittings on it. We just got a bunch of parts back from getting bearings coated, and we had to order a special cutter for the valve seats and the head. Everything's kind of prepped now. All right. We got the list we're starting on for Ryan. We got some block work to do. We got some cylinder head work we're gonna get started on. We're getting head in the oven. And then we got some connecting rods we're gonna get into. So let's do it. just torqued up the main line of the block with the bearings in it. I'm gonna mic the crank and see what size these throws are and make some notes and we'll go from there. I mic the crank and I get two inch 204 and 5 tenths. We're gonna set the gauge up at that number. We're gonna put the gauge in each main saddle one at a time by setting the gauge, which is a 10 thousandths gauge, to this size. So when we put it into the block, it's gonna tell us exactly what we have for main bearing clearance from there. The nice thing about coated bearings is when you put the gauge in and check the bearing, it doesn't leave a mark on the bearing like a regular bearing would. So while that's in the oven, we're gonna take the bearings out of the block. We'll do that to protect them from the hone coolant and the bar that we use to hold down the block in the cylinder hone. on the rods now. We're gonna torque them together. We're gonna check big end housing bore. We're gonna check pin fit. And we're gonna check uh, bearing clearance. We're gonna put a bearing in. Uh, we're set up at 2 inch 008 and we're looking at about a half thou over. 2 is 5 to 6. 
So we're using the same gauge to set up for pin fit. Three tenths. Two and a half. Two or three. Yeah, they're all three. So we go back and forth because you'll end up creating a little burr. You want to break the burr off when you put the bearing in. And you got to center it because it's not tanged. All right, so we got Ryan's block all finished up with the inspection process on the bearings from the table. We're gonna put it into the hone and we're gonna get the torque plate on. We're gonna get the gauge set up for the new pistons. I just took profilometer readings to see what they had from Toyota, just so I have a comparison. I'm gonna size this per CP spec. I've already talked to them about what they want for their rings. So we're good to go there. It's the important part, you gotta get the cat bed lined up so it points at the work, that way she can oversee operations. Looks good, repeatable every time. This is the used head gasket that came in the long block. I'm gonna use that in between the deck plate and the block for the hauling process. start honing. We're going to shake it down a little bit and see where it's at. We just do progress checks along the way and see where things are at. Alright, we got the cylinders the final size. It sat, everything came out really nice. So now we're just gonna brush hone it, then this thing's done.
All right, we're wrapping up the day working on Ryan's G16E Toyota engine. We've made a good amount of progress. We got the block checked. We got the main line checked, main clearance checked. We got the cylinder head in the oven. We got all the valve guides out, looked at the connecting rods, checked the big end housing bores. We checked the rod bearing clearance. We checked all the tolerances on the rods. Cylinders are now size for Ryan's pistons. All finished up there. We're gonna come back on Friday and then we're gonna continue on. Hey guys, it's Randall. We're back at Precision. Today we're going to be doing filing of the ring end gaps. We're going to be resurfacing the block deck. We're going to be honing all the valve guides and we're going to be balancing the crankshaft. We're gonna get the block set up in the resurfacer and we're gonna get the top of the deck cleaned up. So we just took a light pass, a small area here that didn't clean up. So we're gonna get set up and take one more final and we'll be done. All right, we're wrapped up with the block now. We're gonna bring you over and show you the valve guide honing with Thomas. We've changed out the valve guides and the valves with all SuperTech parts. Now we're gonna size the guides for the valve specifically. That took like a tenth and a half out, but that's about where we want to be. We're all done installing and honing the guides on the head. After a couple hours of honing, we're at the specs that we want to be at. We're going to be cutting the seats next.
the cylinder head all fixtured up in the Sun and VGS 20 seat and guide machine. Now we're going to start this process of cutting all the valve seats. We can flip it over and have a little look at it here. Looks very nice. We did some light port work yesterday. Max came in, did all the intake and exhaust ports. He spent about half to the whole day on it, and now he's got it prepped for me, and we're gonna go from there. cut the exhaust seats first. I'm all set up to go. I'll cut one exhaust seat, take that out, put the valve in. We're gonna lap the valve and see how the pattern looks. If we're happy with it, then we'll go ahead and we'll cut the other five. compound it's a full complete pattern it's in a nice spot on the valve when you lap the valve in the valve should have a full seat all the way around but then when you check the actual seat side, I should see there also a full value all the way around. All right guys, you saw us do the disassembly, then we got into the machine work. Did all the honing, surfacing, checked all the bearing clearances, we honed our valve guides, we did all our head work, cut the seats. Next for us is gonna be cleaning and final inspection. Then you'll see us come back and we're gonna assemble Ryan's G16.